most just uh, hats off to Central Connecticut State University. I mean, they, they really played hard and they were a formidable opponent and uh, certainly gave us a, a real battle and uh, appreciate them for that. Uh, really proud of our young men. Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't pretty by any stretch of the imagination. You know, up seven to three at half. Uh, you know, I think that there could have been a a tendency to panic a little bit, to tighten up. And I thought our guys came in at halftime and just made some adjustments. I think they calmed down a little bit. Uh, we corrected some of the errors that we were making, and uh, we came out. We had a, a pretty darn good second half. I like the way we ran the football again. When you have a young quarterback that's growing into the position, and this is his first start, he's a true freshman, I think in order to, to make him feel comfortable, you have to be able to, to run the football. Uh, and we've been able to do that now two weeks in a row. Uh, I thought we played well on defense. I don't think we played great. We gave up too many explosive plays again. Uh, but our guys played hard, and that uh, was one of our points of emphasis this week. And then I think you know blocking the kick, and, and blocking the punt certainly played a part in our win today, and I thought we covered kicks well as well. Um, the things that we need to do better, uh, start with the defense, is you know too many explosive runs again, and uh, you know runs getting out on us, and I can't tell you exactly why. I can tell you that I think a couple of them were, were poor calls. I think a couple times we just didn't have great gap integrity, which we need to be able to do a better job of, uh, and then offensively. You know, we have to be able to take care of the football. We cannot turn the football over three times and expect to win many games. So we've got to do a better job there. We've got to be able to close in the red zone. You know, certainly the, the, uh, the interception at the end of the first half, we had a chance to go up 10-3, to three, have some momentum going into the locker room, and, uh, and Zion forced that one in there. Now, the positive thing about, about Zion Turner is he will learn from that. He's a very cerebral football player. Uh, he cares desperately about being a good football player. He uh, learns from his mistakes. There are going to be growing pains when you play with a, with a freshman quarterback, but if you can win a game and learn in the process, then that's, that's the most important thing, and he will absolutely learn. And then we've got to have better operation on the, the field goal. There's absolutely no excuse for getting a field goal blocked. The ball came out low. Uh, Noe's got to, got to get it up there a little bit. He's got to, Got to put more air under it. It was a 53 yarder, so it's going to come out a little bit lower. But he's got to be able to get it up over the line of scrimmage. I thought our protection on that was good. Uh, so listen, a lot of good, uh, a lot of a lot of things that we can grow from, and a lot of teachable moments in there. And uh, you know, these guys will celebrate this for 24 hours, and then we'll set our jaw and get ready for the next one next Friday night. I, I do want to say this. Uh, you know, coaching my first game at the rent, not really understanding uh, or knowing what to expect. The, the people that were there, uh, you felt them. You know, you felt them. And uh, the people that weren't there, hopefully they're there next Friday night because we do feed off the energy. It's, it's you know, it's there is such thing as home field advantage. It's not, it's not a myth. It, it's real. And so we appreciate everyone who was there. Appreciate them being in there for kickoff and and hopefully. Friday night at 7 o'clock when we take on Syracuse, we get more people in there. I think it's going to be a great environment. I think that, you know, having the lights on, the weather should be great, the smell of the grass. I mean, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be real football. So uh, hopefully we can get we can get some more people there. The people were there that were there were awesome. So any questions? What got you going offensively in the second half? Are you moving the ball a little bit better? Taking care of the football. You know what I mean? Not, not fumbling. Because we were moving the ball well in the first half. But then we've given it away, and and you got to take care of the people. You know, I mean, the the turnover ratio and the explosive gains ratio are the two things that you look at that are most closely associated with winning and losing football games. And uh, you know, fortunately today we were over, we were able to overcome having a negative turnover ratio because we ran the ball so well and we played good defense, but. You know, that's living on the edge, and we don't want to live there. So we've got to take better care of the ball than we did in the second half. Is there any sort of relief that comes with getting the first win? Um, relief? <laughs> Probably, yeah. I haven't really thought of that. I mean, you know, right now what I feel is just proud of those young men in there that have been through so much the last two years. 
I mean, the things that they've endured, the things that they've had to weather, the way that they've stuck together, the commitment that they've shown, uh, I mean, it's almost overwhelming, really. You know, going through COVID, and, and we all went through COVID, but, you know, it was different for these kids. You know, they were very, 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 very isolated. You know, they, they missed a season, which not many people did. Last year, you know, they go through a season where they only win one game. Um, their coach quits on them, um, and they have to stick together. And they did stick together. And so, you know, you talk about that statement that, you know, adversity reveals character. Well, I think adversity has revealed the character of these young men, and it's high character. And so I'm just proud of them. I'm blessed to be able to be their coach. So that's, I guess, my relief. 7-3 um, coming out of the second half. Gordine had, uh, had the sack. Do you see that as a huge turning point in the game? Oh, huge, huge, huge. Because they took the, raw, the ball right down the field on us. And, uh, you know, if they go up 10-7, to 7, you know, I don't know how we'll react. I think I know how we're going to react. I think we react positively. But, you know, Dow sneaking through there and getting the sack uh, was a really big play for us, you know. And then, of course, you know, them um, hitting the field goal off the upright is, is big as well. 7-6 is, you know, that's just a little too tight. Other than the win, did you see a step forward this week? I did, and, I, and I'll tell you where I saw it is um, they're starting to believe. You know, they're starting to believe in themselves. They're starting to believe in each other. They're starting to believe in the process. And I shouldn't say starting. They've already started to believe in it. But they're, it's, it's, they're, really, they're really feeling it, you know. And they understand, I think, what it takes to be a winner. And I think they're prepared to make that commitment every single day. And that's one of the reasons it's such a joy for me to go to work every day, is because I get to be around these kids that are just like, they're just desperate to win. I mean, they're freaking desperate to win. And it's awesome to be in that environment as a coach. Jim, what was the, the atmosphere like when you walked into the locker room after the game? Can you describe anything that happened or was said? Or? It was joyous. Yeah, they were very excited. You know, they celebrated with the band, which will become a tradition, hopefully here. Uh, well, it will be, uh, but then they got in the locker room and just, you know, it just felt like, it felt good, you know, they were happy, and I love to see them happy, you know, and they were excited, and, uh, you know, they brought, they brought Sweet Feet, Jake Flynn to the middle, and jumped all over him, and they brought Victor in there, and jumped all over him, and, you know, that's what team does, is they, they recognize the contributors, you know, the, the, the walk-on, the freshmen, you know, that came in and played a big part in their win, and they, they celebrate those others that are on their team. And that, to me, that like I said, I t I've talked so, you guys know, I've talked so much about the character of these guys and the lack of a sense of entitlement. That just, to me, was it in a nutshell. Jim, so is, the, is the fact that it was a comfortable margin of victory important to you? It's probably important to those fans you're trying to get to come out next week. They've seen you kind of struggle in a lot of these games in the past 10 or 12 years. You know what? Here, here's how I look at it. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm probably a little different uh, than, than the average fan. Um, early in the year, I like a, uh, I like a game where we have to struggle and win. I like adversity because when you do struggle and you do overcome it and you do win, it builds confidence. Now, I hope our fans, I hope the people that are kind of on the fence a little bit about whether they want to jump in with us, I hope they give us the benefit of the doubt. You know. And I hope they jump in. And I, I can tell you this, if they do, they will be rewarded, you know. And I can't say that we're going to come out here and blow everybody out, but they are going to see a group of young men that play hard and that really care and that compete their tails off to the bitter end. And you know what? That's a hell of a start right there. Is there concern over the drop passes or excitement that they turned it around in the second half and held on to some balls? That, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, there's always concern, you know. So we will go back and we'll be our worst, own, our own worst critic. I mean, and I told the guys in there, I said, hey, you know, we're going to celebrate the win. But they will all, on their iPad, within an hour, be watching the game. And I said, be, be as critical as you can possibly be on yourself. Okay, be your own worst critic in this game. Yes, celebrate it, but look and find out what we can do better. And one of the things is, is catch the ball. And, uh, you know, that's a receiver's number one job is catch the football. And, you know, we've dropped some balls. But 
we, we've improved that and we will keep improving it. I will say this about our receivers is I thought their perimeter blocking was outstanding. Matter of fact, the official came up to me twice in the game and he said, hey, number two, you got to talk to number two, he's on the edge. And I said, is he over the edge? He said, no, but he's on. I said, well, that's what we want him. We want him on the edge, you know. So, I, you know, Nigel was, was blocking the heck out of people. So, you know, that's, uh, that's something that goes unnoticed a lot of times in the run game is your perimeter blocking your receivers, and they did a good job. Jim, you were able to get a, a little more uh, pass rush pressure on uh, today. Williams was not really comfortable in the pocket. You sent a couple of different blitzes. Was that part of the game plan going in? It was. Yeah, our, our you know, I, I made the, the comment last week that I felt like I handcuffed the guys a little bit in terms of their, their ability to just tee off and, and rush the passer. And so we turned them loose a little bit more today. We brought more pressures. Uh, we felt like we had a, a little bit of a tip on their protection tendencies. But really, it was just the men up front, you know, and the coverage down the field, making them hold the ball. But I felt like the, the pressure was pretty relentless. And, uh, you know, I credit Kenny and those guys up front just the way they put the plan together this week. Coach, you put Kale in for a couple plays on a couple of drives. Was that part of the plan coming in? or Kale? Yeah. Yeah. What, what's the plan? Have him for just a couple plays on a couple drives. And well, going forward again, do, or? yes, it is. Yeah, Kale's a really good football player who's coming off of his shoulder and he's starting to feel better and better and better. Uh, and, you know, Nick's a creative guy and Nick's going to find ways to get playmakers on the field. You know, so far, really, when Kale's been in there, it's been run. We did have a pass day with him in there, but they covered it up and he ended up having to run. But, uh, you know, I think Kale is gaining confidence in himself and his shoulder. It's feeling a lot better. I think that Nick is gaining confidence in Kale. Uh, and I think that he can be a real weapon. You know, he's a 6'3", 210-pound player who can really run. He's very athletic. He's very smart. Um, and we're not going to let weapons just stand on the sideline. So you'll see more and more, more of Kale Millen. He had a great moment in practice the other day. It was awesome. I mean, his team, the scout team, so he was... He was the, the Central Connecticut State University uh, quarterback, and we ran the old Philly special, you know, the reverse pass, and he caught it for a touchdown on the first defense, and he took that ball, and he spiked that thing as hard as you've ever seen anyone spike a ball. I'm surprised it didn't go to the fence. When we don't run a play right, we say, hey, reload it, reload it, reload it, and Kale starts yelling that. He's waving his hands, reload it, reload it, reload it, to the defense, and I mean, it was just awesome, you know? So. We love that passion out of all of our players. Coach, what was the biggest improvement you saw of Zion this week, whether it was preparing for this game or just in-game today? Zion always prepares well. And, and I say always. I've only been with him for two weeks. But, you know, he is a young man who has maturity. Uh, it is important to him. He's going to spend the time. He is able to create that Zoom focus that allows him to really get into the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, I, I think what probably impressed me the most was just a frustrating first half you know, throwing the, the interception, we had a chance to get at least three on the board. And yet, I'm sure it bothered him, but it didn't affect his performance. You know, he still just went out and tried to play aggressively. I believe what you'll see out of Zion as we go on is a, a, a young man that we learn more about. And so we can put him in positions to be successful, all right? And a guy that plays more aggressively because he feels more comfortable doing what we're asking him to do. And I thought, you know, that last one where he pulled it and he ran for the first down, that was an indicator. That last week he had some chances where he could have pulled it and ran, and he didn't. As that game went on, he became more confident in that. We've got to do a better job in the pass game, and that will certainly be a focus, but we have to make sure we're, we're, we're asking him to do the things he does well. Jim, what did you see from Victor Rosa that allowed him to earn a chance to get on the field as a freshman? Oh, his work ethic, his attitude, his uh, personality, uh, his attention to detail, um, and he's a, he's a good player. You know, he's tough, he's fast, he's strong, he's physical. Uh, our players respect him. Uh, he runs hard. You know, um, there are certain things that, that uh, Coach Barthel looks for in running backs. It's a certain mentality, and uh, Victor has that. It's been hard for him to, you know, in the first two weeks find a lot of play time because obviously Nate's played well, and, and Brian's played well, and Devontae's played well, and, and had Bernsey in there a little bit. You know, he hasn't really carried the ball much, but he's in the in the rotation. Uh, but Victor got a chance today, and I think we saw him that, that last touchdown, what he's capable of, you know. And so I, I would assume, standing here today, that we'll see more and more of Victor Rosa. He proved something to us today.
Coach, you always talk about a 24-hour buffer period after yeah. after the game. I'm wondering, what do you do during that time? Uh, well, the first thing I'll do is uh, I go home and fall asleep. And then, and then, you know, as coaches, you know, we, we're relentlessly hard on ourselves. We'll go watch the film and probably spend about 10 seconds on the good plays and, you know, we spend hours on the ones that we need to improve on. And that's really, if you want to be good at anything, that's what you have to do. You have to self-evaluate and be hard on yourself. Um, and then we get back at it in the morning. You know, we'll watch this film, we'll make corrections, we'll apply the lessons learned, and then we're going to get on to Syracuse. You know, Friday night at 7 o'clock. I mean, it's going to be a great atmosphere. Lights will be on. I mean, we've got this amazing field that the, the crew here takes care of. I mean, there'll be that smell in the air that you love. You know, that whole that, that night game. I mean, man, I don't know where I can put why anyone would want to be in the rent on Friday, on Saturday night. Right? Right? Exactly. Except down in the house on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about high school football. I'm just like, geez. But, uh, I think it's going to be awesome, man. And like I said earlier, just so grateful for all the fans that were there tonight. And hopefully, you know, more say, hey, maybe we should go look at these guys. And, uh, and that's our objective, is to make them proud. So thanks for everything. Appreciate it. Hey,